So here we have the rig expert AA-30.0. It's a board for an antenna analyzer or here referred to as a vector impedance analyzer that you use to analyze antennas. This is a DIY kit. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued by rig expert, but you can still find these at various ham radio or amateur radio outlets. I really like this board. It looks like it's well put together and everything is thoroughly documented on the board. It's definitely a quality product. Now what we're going to do is connect this to our computer using a USB to serial interface. Oops, I forgot. Let's check and see what came in the box. The box itself isn't very big. And the only thing it came with are these breakaway pin headers, which we're going to need to solder to the board. Here is the interface that we're going to use. You can pick these up for about eight bucks off of Amazon. It's just a simple serial to USB header. Pay attention to this pin layout because we're going to need it when we reference a diagram to wire this to our rig expert board. I broke the headers into groups that align with the pinouts on the board. And I use a product called Blue Tack to hold the pins in place while I go ahead and solder them. To make this easy, I use these standoffs to elevate the board off of my desk. Admittedly, I'm not the best with a solder iron, but I was able to solder in all the pins. If you have any comments about my soldering capability, I'd love to hear all about it down in the comment section below. Here is the Rig Expert website. I'll include a link below. It's the page for the Rig Expert AA30. It says it's the most affordable vector and HF antenna analyzer in the world. Just being candid, the Nano VNA is a little bit cheaper. It says it comes with USB connection and free software. Arduino users add vector impedance analyzer and RF generator to your project. And it talks all about the device itself. Here's a link for getting started with the Zero. I'm not going to read all of this, but as discussed, the AA30 comes with built-in USB circuitry, so an off-board USB to URTTL serial converter should be used to communicate with the analyzer. And that's what we're going to do. Here is the pinout for this particular UART. I'm using a little bit of a different one, but we're going to use the same pinouts. I want to make note that we are using the 5 volt pinout, not the 3.3. Here's your ground connection and then your TX and RX, which are reversed on the input output of the board itself. And then here you can see the 5 volt and the ground down at the bottom. Now because I don't have any of these, these cables are called DuPont cables, and because I don't have any female to female, our project is going to include a breadboard just like this. I'll roll in a picture now. So here's my setup, and it replicates what was in the instructions. You simply plug your UART adapter into a port, a USB port on your computer, and then you connect your device under test to the SMA connector on the board itself. In this case, we are going to analyze a 40 meter N-fed half wave antenna. When you plug it in, your system tray should tell you that your device is ready to use. And then you want to download the Antscope software. Here is Antscope. It's my understanding that you can use Antscope 2 with this particular device. Here you can go to the file section and then go to outdated versions because we're going to use Antscope. And then this is the installation for the latest version 040305. Just download that and run the executable and the software will, will be installed. I went ahead and hooked everything up to the computer and all of a sudden I got some blinking lights on the Rig Expert analyzer. And blinking lights are a good thing. Once I plugged the Rig Expert into my computer, I went to Device Manager. I opened it up and then I expanded my ports, COM and LPT. Here I can see Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge on COM4. Here we are with Antscope up and running. One thing I want to point out is that when you start Antscope, you need to come over to Configure. You want to make sure that you have AA-30 analyzer selected. Come down to COM port. Make sure COM port 4 is connected or selected. Hit OK. 
And then down in the bottom left hand corner, it should say Detected Rig Expert AA30 on COM4. I can come over to Measurement, and I have some different options here. I'm going to pick Range, and that's going to open this box. Here you can see the limits are from 0 to 30,000 kilohertz. Here it has a resolution of 1,000 points. This originally out of the box was set to 100, but I messed with it and now it's set to 1,000. The points are the number of measurements the device will take across your range or your sweep. The more points you select, the more accurate and granular your measurements will be. I can click on this button and that will still pull up my scan range, just like we got from the measurement dropdown. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that's going to initiate the scan. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to speed it up. Now the sweep is complete, and then you can follow the blue line, which is my SWR reading across the various bands. I think it's safe to say that my antenna is a little bit long, and that's a problem that I constantly battle. My antenna, for whatever reason, continues to stretch, so every couple weeks I have to go out and trim a couple inches off of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at 40 meters in particular. So I go ahead and I click this icon and it pulls up the range button. And I'm going to change this to, let's say, 6,500 to 7,500. And let's just go ahead and change our data points to 500. I click OK and the sweep starts running. Here you can see that I am below 2 to 1 across the 40 meter band but I can actually get that lower. I can move my cursor along the line so I can get specific readings for any frequency that I'm interested in. Additionally, I can go into view and I can look at other measurements, for example, a Smith chart, if I wanted to do further analysis. I could look at phase, and then there's some other ones here like Z equals R plus JX. We're not going to take a deep dive on the Anscope software itself. This is really just an introduction to get somebody up and running. Out of the box, you'll be able to do sweeps from 0 to 30 megahertz. There is a file that is in the C drive users username, in my case, a app data local rig expert and scope folder. This file is called antscope.ini. We can modify this file so we can do sweeps from 0 to 230 megahertz. Double click on the file and it will open in notepad. The second row needs to be changed from 30 million to 230 million. Once you do this, your sweep range will be extended. Here's a sweep that I did of my Edfong Rollup J pole. And what you can see here is that the sweep goes from 140 megahertz to 150 megahertz. The two meter band is highlighted in yellow, and then you can see my SWR plot across this band. And that's really going to wrap this video up. I want to say thanks for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it.